truth, accuracy, facts. We depend on accurate information every day of our lives. We often take for granted that the information around us, such as maps of the cities we live in, are correct. But this hasn't always been the case. And you can see that even recent maps of the United States sometimes depicted California as an island, which can cause obvious problems if you're headed toward the Bay of California. Biochemistry is no different. We depend on metabolic maps to develop hypotheses and interpret our data. But there is still much to explore about the chemistry of our bodies and many unknowns exist, which can contribute to disease. My name is Christian Metallo and my laboratory at UC San Diego aims to understand how metabolism and enzyme promiscuity contribute to human disease. Metabolism is the biochemistry of life. This is how we convert our food and nutrients that we take in from the environment along with oxygen and water to energy and body mass. And we have little machines in our bodies called enzymes which catalyze these chemical reactions. But sometimes things go wrong. Genetic mutations that we can acquire or be born with can cause changes in the blueprints of these enzymes or machines and cause them to make the wrong and sometimes toxic byproducts. Alternatively, if we overfeed ourselves or starve ourselves, we can also see these issues arise. And metabolic processes are often dysregulated in the context of diseases such as cancer, diabetes, or neurodegenerative disorders. So it's our hope to explore these metabolic maps in more detail to identify potential causes and cures for these diseases. One example of a promiscuous enzyme catalyzing an alternate metabolic pathway is shown here. The SBT enzyme normally takes amino acids and fatty acids and produces the lipid on the right hand side of the screen. However, under conditions of diabetes or specific inherited genetic mutations, this enzyme will catalyze an alternate reaction leading to a toxic lipid on the right. We have recently correlated genetic information and metabolomics data to demonstrate that these toxic lipids are elevated in the context of a particular disease of the eye. This is important for patients because we can now turn around and apply existing drugs or work to develop new therapeutic targets that inhibit production of these toxic metabolites. Dietary manipulation is also an option for the patients. Importantly, this metabolic pathway is absent from most, if not all, metabolic maps available, textbooks as well. But we're continuing to explore this further in the context of a number of different diseases. Finally, I'd like to thank the hardworking students and postdocs who have contributed to my lab's efforts over the last seven years, as well as the Camille and Henry Dreyfus Foundation for their support.